we have a lot to get through tonight. So um, I think we'll, we're going to get started here in just a second. Let me shrink my controls so that I can see my screen. And I, I think, Rich, if you're ready, my clock says 8 o'clock. We have quite a bit to go. We're going to go uh, give a real high-level overview of dental sleep medicine, but in particular kind of focus in on some cr critical decisions that you all need to make if you're going to be successful in dental sleep medicine because uh, that's all Rich and I do. We've been doing this um, – uh, each of us individually for 17 years or so, so well over 30 years between us. Uh, that's all we do now. Each of our practices are uh, our dental sleep and teach other dentists how to do it. Um, Rich, anything you want to say about your practice? I know you're really busy these days. Yeah, well, I, I will say, Guy, that I try to do what I teach. Uh, we, we try to implement these pillars and these things that we're going to talk about, and uh, Guy and I, we, we, we say, uh, we, we teach you how to do something and we say, well, ask me how I know. It's because we've made all of these mistakes uh, along the way and you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, whether you're just getting started in this or you've been doing it for a little while, I think you're going to learn something tonight. So let's get yeah, started. We did a few things right along the way as well. And so we're going to keep doing these webinars uh, once a month. Uh, typically, it's going to be the last Tuesday of each month. And next month, we're going to be talking about home sleep testing increasing your access to care in your practice. And we're going to have a, the fortunate, uh, fortunate enough to have sleeptest.com. Uh, Ryan from there, Ryan is Java, Javanbach. I always mispronounce his name, although I know him quite well. Uh, he's going to be on with us. Uh, he's a wealth of knowledge. And so the three of us will, will teach you all you need to know about uh, home sleep testing, how we use it in our practice, uh, uh, how we utilize it for both diagnostic uh, needs as well as follow up on our, on our patient's care. So we'll be touching a little bit on that tonight at a little higher level overview, but we'll get much deeper into it uh, next month. And I'll put that slide up again at the end. And uh, this is what we do at, at DS3. We, we, we are the company that, that provides the education coaching software uh, that, and that you need to implement the four pillars of dental sleep medicine. In particular, those pillars we, we harp on are screening, testing, treating, and billing. What we do is help dental offices succeed in dental sleep. And hopefully, if you like what we're doing here tonight, uh, this is um, just an extension of what our company is all about. We're here to help dentists get through the hurdles of dental sleep. We do it through many ways and uh, through dental education, implementation. Uh, Rich, could you imagine seeing the 50 cases or so a month you do about the software we use nowadays in DS3? Absolutely cannot. I mean, you, you need a system for this, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, Guy said, you know, we're kind of a little bit of a high-level overview, but when we say critical decision-making in this, there are some things that you really do need to do if you want to be successful at this, and that's what we, that's what we do. We help dentists implement this in their practice, and, and you got a thousand questions, and who, who are you going to call? That, that We want to be that person that you call uh, to get that through. We do have a whole bunch of courses that we're doing this year. We have some one days and some two days. And then, you know, our, our uh, premier study club meeting, uh, the dental symposium, we just did that in uh, Florida and in uh, February. And we had what, almost 400 people there and we sold that on the vendors and all that stuff. So we're really gaining a lot of traction. And I think that uh, guy is because we give nuts and bolts uh, right. information. We we really get down to how do you really do this in your practice? We don't we don't spend four hours talking about the effects of blood pressure. Now you need to know uh, what those are, but we're 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 more of the nuts and bolts part of this. Absolutely. And if you want to come to one of these courses, just type in uh, into the questions course. If you know the date, type it in, and uh, uh, Jody or Brandy from our team will follow up and give you a discount uh, just from being on this webinar. And before I forget it, you will get CE for this webinar tonight. It'll be emailed to you. So hang out for the, the webinar and, and, and learn as much as you can. And uh, if you're interested in, in learning more about what we do, we're happy to do a free office consultation too. So if you just type in consultation, we'll go through uh, where you are in your office, talk to you about what your challenges are and see how we might be able to help. So it's, uh, it's well worth your all's time to do that. And we'll do that for free if you type that in. Again, if you have questions, type them in the question box. We will get to them throughout the, uh, the course of the webinar tonight. And we'll try to be finished in an hour. There's a lot of information to go through, but we'll stay on as long as necessary to answer all your questions. Uh, uh, we, we love helping dentists. And this is what it comes down to. We, we 
preach this today every time we teach that if you want to be successful in dental sleep, you want to provide this valuable life-changing service in your practice, then uh, if you have these pillars of success in, in place, screening, testing, treating, and billing, you will, you will be right where you want to be in helping your patients. So you need a system and you need some accountability uh, as far as your, your team goes to provide these systems in your practice. And if you do all that and you're organized and you have team members doing a lot of this, it's just little bitty steps that you need to go through. And you can read them on the screen yourself. I don't have to read them to you. That each little step is not difficult. And you can spend easily less than 45 minutes of doctor time uh, to provide this service, which can be not only profitable, but life-changing for our, uh, uh, the, the, the people that we, that we treat. I want to add, Guy, it can be life-changing for the dentist, too. True. Uh, you, you know, we, we get uh, members that, that a year ago didn't even know what sleep apnea was, and today they're like, oh, my gosh, you've changed my life. You know, I'm, I'm doing more sleep now. I'm bending over less, drilling on teeth, you know, which I think all of us would probably like. I love that slide in your course, Guy, you have where your wife's walking on your back at the end <laughs> of the day. But, but there are a lot of moving parts to this. So uh, Guy talked about the pillars there, and, and those are the, the pillars. But, you know, every one of those pieces is not hard in and of itself. But if one of them's not in place, then people fall through the cracks, and, and you, do, you just don't get things done the right way. Absolutely. And so that's what we're going to help you understand those critical parts. And I, you know, this sleep ambassador, we've talked about this for years, but it's more and more obvious to me that, that this is a, a critical decision that will ensure your practice success. It probably is the most critical decision. Uh, there are offices that do this and they take all these moving parts for a dental sleep and someone screens patients, someone does uh, uh, billing, someone does scheduling, someone does uh, the titration, someone uh, does consults, uh, and that can work, and it certainly can work, but if you want to ensure your success and you make a decision that I'm going to have one person in my practice whose primary focus is to be to service these patients uh, and to, to, to take care of all the things that dental sleep related, that will uh, ensure your success. That person needs to be organized. They've got to have a burning desire to learn. They've got to be able to communicate. I have articulate on the slide, but I, I'm not the most articulate person at times, but I think we can, we got to be able to relate to our patients. They've got to be able to multitask, and they've got to be very responsible and, and quick to respond. If you hire that person, and they, they might not even be from the dental world. They may be from outside the dental world, and you get them in, and you give them this job, and I can tell you, whatever you pay them, uh, they'll bring way more back to that in your practice. You can build a practice within your practice by making a designated person. We like this term sleep ambassador uh, for it. Anything on that, Rich, that I missed? No, I, that's away. Good. I, I just want to hit, I want to hit that nail on the head one more time, guy. I mean, the, 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 the thousand members that we have using what our system and what we're doing, if you take the top 10%, every single one of them have a sleep ambassador yeah so, and it's not someone that's got to be a eighty thousand dollar a year job it yeah. probably could be less than some you're paying some of your dental assistants because there's not a whole lot of prerequisite you can take someone with a desire to succeed and a desire to have a, a a value in life and just hasn't found the right position and uh, they may be working at a department store or something and and give them this job and they can really go and the second the critical decision is you know we got to find patients and it, it bewildering to me that when uh, sometimes this is a uh, uh, an issue for our, our our people we talk to, they go, "Well, I don't have any patients. I'd love to do this." And uh, I think that there's there's some some around. What do you think, Rich? Yeah, I mean, I I showed up at a dentist's office the other day, and you know, in four hours of being there, we screened ten patients, and we we got four set up for sleep tests, and we actually took impressions on two. Uh, patients for a dental device and these guys were asking the same thing you know where do my patients come from the answer is they're walking through your doors every day right. so that, that's the lowest hanging fruit are those people that are walking through your doors you know guy I remember just out of school and I'm giving a guy a shot and he's sitting there snoring and you know of course what went through my head man I'm a good dentist I can give this guy a shot and he falls asleep I I didn't understand he was almost dead from sleep apnea but, but they are. They're walking through your doors every day. We, we got to have a system for how we, how we 
harvest those patients, though, don't we? How do we find them? Yeah, and they could come from other places, but one in five adults has at least mild apnea. So one in five adults and half the adults snore. And so they can come from your office, referrals, external marketing. Uh, I'm just chuckling a little bit, Rich, because you've, it's been so long since you've done dentistry, you're calling them shots. I think uh, we, we could be a little bit nicer and say injections, maybe. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> world. But that's kind of funny. Uh, you know, he, Rich has been doing this, you know, just this for many years, longer than I have. I've been doing it as long, but not exclusively. And, the, you know, if we can find enough patients to make a living just from it, you can certainly find enough to add a, a lot of value to your practice. And what it comes down to is you have to believe as a dentist that this is your responsibility, that the airway closing off is something that that is my job as a dentist to be looking for and refer the patient appropriately to get tested. And you got to be prepared to do that. Uh, if you have those two things, you believe and you're prepared and you have a system to, to get them to the to proper testing, um, the, the sky's the limit. It's, it's not like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Uh, it's like trying to find a piece of hay in a haystack. <laughs> They're so... Yeah. I've never, I've never seen that picture that all those toilet rolls, man. That's funny. <laughs> well, you know how, you know how prepared I am. I'm Mr. You know, over-prepared, but uh, you know, this, the, the, the numbers are huge and Rich, what he said, you know, the, the, the low hanging fruit, you know what Rich, I've said a few times, it's not even low hanging fruit. There's patients in your practice who, who can't wear their CPAP, been struggling, who may actually die because of this in the next year or two. <laughs> that are right in your practice that yeah. that's not low hanging the, the fruit's falling off the tree and you're yeah. just walking around on it there's so many patients out there uh that you just need to start screening them that's the bottom line and and we can show you how to do that uh, that's one of the critical decisions is how are you going to how are you going to find these patients in your practice and get them from uh untreated apneic patients to people at least know they have apnea yeah, and if you're not screening for it, if you're motivated by money, just think about that's money flying out the door, you know. We always uh, preach that you practice on outcome and not income. And uh, if you keep the patient's best interest at heart, it's hard to get too far off track. But uh, whatever motivates you to do this, uh, we're, we're all for that. So how do we identify these people? Uh, you know, we have hygiene patients coming into our practice and we have restorative patients coming into our practice for the most part and an occasional emergency. So uh, we're very good, uh, both hygienists and dentists at reviewing medical history. And sometimes, Guy, it's that simple. Yeah. You know, are, do, you, have you had, do you have any new medical diagnoses? Oh yeah, I got uh, diagnosed with sleep apnea a couple months ago. Oh yeah, uh, w w what happened? Oh, they gave me that machine and I, I can't wear that thing, you know? So you've already got one of those patients that you're talking about uh, doing that. But you gotta ask questions, you know, you gotta, how do you feel? Like you said earlier, guy, that sleep ambassador is the quarterback of your entire team now and they have to get everybody on board as well as the doctor. And, and we want them, everybody to buy into the fact that you really can save people's lives uh, when you do this. And, and when, you, when everybody starts to pick up on that, then it, then it really becomes uh, something that picks up steam and, and you gain on it. Yeah, and we can do this a little bit more efficiently through screening tools, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. Uh, when we're when we're going to discuss this while we're thinking about this, this is what I call a red flags. Uh, we, you know, earlier on we didn't have good systems, so we just started thinking like Rich. Okay, someone's got high blood pressure. Wow, that's a red flag for apnea. Uh, they have AFib, 50% chance they have apnea. And this this uh, this screen, um, we will be happy to email this to you if you set up one of those uh, free consultations um, with one of our our trainers. Uh, but if you'll memorize this, which shouldn't take too long, and every time you see one of these things, it should pop in your head. Now, we'll, again, we'll come up with a little bit uh, better system for this, but you got to kind of under know what uh, know what's underlying the system. Why these people at risk? Diabetic patients, almost half of them, 48%. As you look through the the list, and you can see as you look at this, if th this is what we have to look for if we're going to screen people for apnea, who's in a better position than us, the dentists, for doing that? I mean. Uh, uh, the primary cares, the uh, ENTs, I mean, maybe the ENTs, but the, most people don't see ENTs. So, you know, we're really in the primary position for doing this. So the system that we've come up with basically are three steps before you get to treat. And the biggest problem is what, Rich? Where do people want to jump, jump to? I know I know you, where you want to go to when the wife's not looking in the kitchen. 
<laughs> to, yeah, to get the tree down the cupboard, right? Exactly. <laughs> so it's a little play on words. We, but we jump from, hey, you need a dental device. And, and what we need is a way to screen, to identify our patients through a screening process for those patients to acknowledge, hey, yeah, I might have a problem here. Uh, I might, I see my airway could be an issue. We need to have a way to get them tested and then we treat them. So if we go through each of those steps before we jump to the treat, we'll be better off. And we don't have as much time as I'd like to talk about today, but somewhere along the way, we probably need to talk about medical billing. They're gonna ask how much uh, this, this is gonna cost. So again, breaking this down in, into steps. Don't you love the screener that we use, Rich? I mean, I think you've had a lot to do with the development of it. And uh, I, I thanks for, for all your efforts on it because it really makes things easier. Yes, thank you. I mean, we, we have simplified this as much as you possibly can. So through our cloud-based system, you just put the patient's name and phone number in, and, and we have, we, we teach most of the time for the hygienist to do this. Your sleep ambassador could do it. They could do it at the reception area. Uh, you know, look, Dr. Yatros is really interested in patients' overall health. You know that, that we've always been concerned about. So we want you to take this quick uh, questionnaire. It only takes about three to four minutes. And uh, when they're done answering these questions, this is what's looking at them on the screen. They go, severe risk? What, what am I at severe risk for? Right. And isn't that wonderful? One thing I think that's kind of enlightening when we teach our courses and even in our coaching that we provide it through, DS, through our DS3 uh, system is if you can get a patient to ask you a question, that you want to answer. That's a whole lot better than telling them something they don't want to hear. Uh, and uh, this tablet, when they're holding that in their hand and it comes up severe risk, they're going, what does this mean? Yeah. And their brain is in, ready to hear it, hear the answer. And then your sleep ambassador just touches right there on where it says view results. And they have the answers to the questions or whoever's going to review this. Again, the sleep ambassador is ideal for this. And then they can go through and go, well, yeah, well, well, Mr. Smith, you know, you answered these questions and you were sleepy, it looks like. Look, you're having trouble staying awake while you're watching movies, driving, or sitting at, you know, after dinner, uh, uh, after eating. Tell me about that. And they'll say, oh, yeah, I'm tired. And I see that you snore, and we can explain the, the reasons that, uh, that, that snoring are related to airway. And we can talk about their comorbidities, such as high blood pressure, that a third of the people or so that have high blood pressure have these problems. And my gosh, we're concerned that your airway is getting really narrow at night. And that's what's causing all these problems. And then, what, um, what can I do about it? That's right. And if you, it, as I say, if you, if you just be quiet after that and shut up, and he who talks first loses. Just, I'm concerned about your airway closing off. You may be suffocating at night, Mr. <laughs> Smith. And, and just look at him. And Mr. Smith eventually will go, Well, my gosh, how will I know? What can I do about it? Well, you're going to need to, to have a test. We can do a test. We can do it at home and we can do it in the sleep lab. Which would you prefer? And we're going to talk about that right now. So having a system is a critical decision to screen your patients. The things that should happen, it should happen quickly. It should take more than three, four, or five minutes at the most. It should put all those patients in categories for you. And it should make the patient self-aware like our system here. Oh, wow. They should make them want to ask questions about it so that now the patient realizes they're at risk, they've acknowledged they're at risk, and now we can move on to one of the other critical decisions, which is uh, home sleep testing. A few key things about this, you notice I didn't say apnea. Uh, we don't know they have apnea. We don't say we think you have cancer if it's oral cancer, uh, if it's what we're concerned about. We, we're worried about the lesions, and we, we just try not to talk too much. Let the patient come to that decision, and now we're ready to answer that question, and we better have a plan for the diagnosis. I want to take just a second because we're about 20 minutes in. If you have questions, I see some of you are typing them in. Keep typing them in there. Uh, we're answering them as we go. We'll stay on as long as need be uh, at, at the end. You'll get CE at the end. And um, if anybody uh, uh, wants to know a little bit more about what we do, uh, they'll be typing in some information about uh, signing up for a consultation with us. I think they even have a free marketing kit for anybody that, that we, uh, we go through the consultation with. So again, we'll be on uh afterwards to answer the question so next critical decision the patient you've done the hard part right rich that you said hey what what am i going to do here we need a system for this and well we 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 found a patient guy yes you know that's, that's the biggest question that dennis asks all the time hey where where do i find these people well we just found one right. we screened them 
holy cow, this guy's at fear risk. He's falling asleep at stoplights. You know, he's going to lose his job. Oh, but by the way, he, he drives an 18 wheeler for a living. Yeah. So, uh, you, you know, we need to do something about this. So when people ask that question, you have to be prepared. You can't say, well, you should probably go get a sleep test. Uh, good luck. I'll see you in six months when we clean your teeth again. No, we're talking about a disease that could kill you. You wouldn't say that if you saw this big old nasty looking thing on the side of their cheek, would you? No, you would say, my gosh, that doesn't look right. We have got to get that thing biopsied as soon as possible. So you'd you walk them up front, wouldn't you, and make the appointment. You, yes, you, you, absolutely. You, you, you wouldn't just say, hey, here's, a, here's, a, here's a five oral surgeons, uh, call one of them. Yes. We would facilitate that test. And I, I like that word, Guy, facilitate. Yeah. I like that. So what do we do? Do we go to get a PSG, a polysomnogram? You know, we hook up all these wires and we do that. So, you know, back in the day, this is all we had. Uh, but now we're doing more and more home sleep testing. And you know what's driving that guy? I know uh, it's not going to be what everybody thinks. It's not patient choice. It's not uh, uh, the fact that this, uh, sleep tests at home are, are uh, in, more in, inexpensive. Well, maybe a little bit to do that, but it's the insurance company, I think, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, they, they, they have all the money but, and they make all the rules. Yes. Yeah. And so it makes sense to them to do this at home. And, you know, I'm going to show a slide at the end about, you know, I'm going to be kind of your parent here and go, you don't know how good you've got it. <laughs> you know, I tell our 10 year old that every day. And you all don't know how good you have it. Uh, for those of you who are new to dental sleep, when 17 years ago, I'll back up a slide. This was our only choice. That was yeah. it. Uh, and now we have options and home sleep test is a viable option. And, you know, the way we put it to the patients are, look, you have two choices. You can go to the sleep lab and have this test. They're going to measure whether you're breathing or not. That snoring will determine if that snoring is just a, a, a narrowing that doesn't hurt anything or is it a narrowing that hurts a lot? We don't know, but we're going to get this test. Or you can wear a little thing home about the size of your, you know, your iPhone here that's going to strap to your uh, chest and we'll measure your breathing there. How, how, which way would you like to proceed? And that's something you taught me, Rich. Is, uh, it's kind of like with our, my son. You taught me that too. Do you want beans or broccoli? Not what do you want to eat, right? We give them two choices and they, and they, they choose. And which one do they typically choose? Uh, people prefer their home sleep test, but they also prefer the one that their insurance pays for. That's true too. So, yes. And most of, the, most, most of the time, the insurances now, to be clear, are gravitating towards a home sleep test. Yes, and that, that's advantageous for us as dentists and that's advantageous for us as patients. You know, my, my wife says I'm a better doctor now, Guy, because I'm a patient more often. So I, I listen better, you know, and I, I do those types of things. I love what you said earlier, Guy, and I want to emphasize that. You never used a big word when you're talking about the sleep test. We hook up these things and we see what's happening with your airway and is it bad and the snoring. You didn't use, you know, hey, we're going to see if we see what your AHI is and your LSAT and, you know, we're, we're going to do all this stuff. No, you, you, you made it very simple, very plain. It wasn't scary at all, but you had this sense of urgency about, man, this is important that we do this. And I think that's, that's one of the things I want to drive home. That comes easy to me because I don't know many big words, so it's uh, <laughs> I certainly can't spell them. So we'll probably spelling errors in this presentation. But you know, Rich is right. You've got to relate to the patients, and we just talk about airway. We just want to know if you're breathing. It's going to cost you a few hundred dollars or to nothing. Let's see if you're breathing. Now, there's a big argument over which is more accurate: a PSG versus a home sleep test. So polysomnogram versus home sleep test. And we could go around and around the circles about it all day. But the bottom line it comes down to, we get a little more data on the PSG. So it's maybe more accurate test because we measure brain waves and some things that we don't measure in a, in, in a home sleep test. But you can't argue you're going to sleep a whole lot differently in the sleep lab than you're going to sleep at home. So it's a less accurate night's sleep. And a home sleep test is a less accurate test. In other words, we collect less data. I don't know if it's less accurate, but we certainly collect less data of a more accurate night's sleep. And the one thing that people don't realize is if you don't sleep well, you will underestimate the apnea. In other words, if we don't get to the deepest stages of sleep, we won't have as much apnea. 
So uh, some people say, well, I didn't sleep well. So that's why I had the apnea. That's not true. It's the opposite. So you can make your own decisions on that. We could argue the point all day. Again, as Rich said, it's probably not up to us. And home sleep tests are the wave of the future, it appears to me. And it's my personal bias given given a, a choice on how to check. Uh, to, and, to, uh, and, Guy, next month, we're going to spend a whole hour on this subject. That's right. That's true. So yeah. we don't need to belabor the point. Good point. With that being said, if you're going to use a home sleep test, and again, we'll spend the the, the a whole uh, a whole bunch of time on what what these things are measuring, and you know all the details and and some big words that you may have to learn a, a couple anyway. Uh, when it comes down to the using home sleep tests, there's what three ways, Rich, uh, that, that we can do it. We 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 used to do it the the first way all the time, right? When they first came around, because the uh, the second one wasn't around. And uh, the, the third one's always been there since they've been allowed. So basically you can re refer patients to a physician. You can use your own piece of equipment if you're looking at the first option. And it, all these tests have to be read by a board certified sleep physician. We cannot make diagnosis. And now there's companies like uh, sleeptest.com that we're gonna be working with on our next webinar that will uh, you can identify and you can just refer to them and they have board certified sleep physicians who can uh, who can read this data, interpret it, make it a diagnosis. There are some legalities to based on your state uh, dental boards that we'll, we'll be discussing then, uh, but most states, uh, these three options are uh, available uh, to utilize currently uh, uh, for your patients. Anything I missed on that, Rich? No, they, they all work. You know, you got to uh -huh. figure out what works best in your community. And, and again, you know, if you live, if you got an office right next to a pulmonologist that does sleep studies, I don't think I go out and buy my own sleep test and do this, you know, but we'll show you how to, how to use all of these. But again, I want to emphasize what Guy said. As a dentist, you cannot make this diagnosis. Uh, some of the states say, as a dentist, you can't even order the sleep test, but most of them you can, and we want to know what those are. But again, tune in next month, and we're going to spend a whole hour on that. But for now, you have screened a patient, you found them, your sleep ambassador is going to help facilitate this test. Yeah, now, and if you have DS3, it's uh, a little easier even. Uh, you your just sleep ambassador has to be able to push that button. <laughs> yeah. We try, we try to make everything as easy as possible for you. And we're trying to lower the barriers. This is a critical decision. You have to have a system. You cannot have this patient come up and say, oh, yes, I'm ready. Let's get the test. And then you're uh, uh, looking around trying to figure out which uh, – where to go to be the test. Uh, so we'll, we'll define that better next time, but uh, that is one of the decisions you're gonna need to make. And sometimes you may have to have more than one path for those patients to go. And we laid, laid them out there for you already. So we're the pillar I four. Like we, we've got to treat, you know, we yes. found a patient, we helped facilitate the test. We had it read by a board certified sleep physician and the patient comes back with a diagnosis of sleep apnea. Absolutely. So the treatment part, you know, Rich and I used to spend most of our time talking about this when we did our webinars, when we did our courses. We'd start by which device to use here or there, and we're going to get into that a little bit tonight. Uh, all these subjects we're happy to dive into more deeply in future webinars. Again, this is kind of a high-level overview, and keep typing in your questions. We'll, we'll get to them. Uh, but, you know, really it's the one you all do the best. You know how to make these devices, but what you tr struggle with is what to do before and after. Like, what, what's, what exam do I do? What, what are my goals of treatment? How do I document this? How do I track the, the sleep uh, test? My, my Dentrix or EagleSoft doesn't have anywhere to put that information. How do I send letters to my physicians? What kind of information do I need to go in there? So everything you can see on the screen is one of the reasons that we developed DS3 because we help manage that information and those steps because actually taking the impressions and the bite and giving the device to the patient most dentists don't struggle with i mean it's it's easier than making a partial or doing a crown and a lot of other things that bite guards and things that you do it's all these steps in, in and around it that become a little bit hard to manage and that that's that's what we will try to explain a little bit more detail but the critical decision is you've got to have a system for doing that if you if you don't uh, you will very much be frustrated in dental sleep because there's too many little moving parts and, and data to store and things to, to put away, uh, to file away and to use later. Yeah, I love, I love your analogy, Guy. I've heard you talk in some of these courses where, and Guy is a, a wonderful 
uh, lecturer. Uh, if you get a chance to hear him talk and you bring your staff, he is, he is the best I've ever heard at getting your staff motivated uh, to do this and write as well as the dentist. But one of the things I heard you say one time, Guy, was, you know, you're going to go play golf. Uh, you don't go play 25 rounds of golf and then hire a golf coach, you know, uh, because now you've learned a couple of bad habits and that kind of thing. So that's where we come in early and we try to teach you these systems uh, for, for how to do this. And if you have the sleep ambassador, you can be very successful at it. Yeah, absolutely. Again, if you want us to look at your practice, we're happy to, to do that. Just type in consult and we'll be happy to call you, uh, contact you with uh, just a free consultation about how to do this. And if you want to come to our courses, uh, we'll put that up at the end of where they are. But if you want a discount on the course, then just type in course with no obligation to come, but at least you'll secure that dis discount. So the system that you're going to use now to do this, part of the critical decision again is to find a system. You need to have certain information uh, and an easily obtainable uh, method. So before the patient comes in, we want to know what their symptoms are, okay, That's and what their um, baseline sleep study is, uh, what, what that says, and if they're going to have any insurance coverage. Because there's really two goals of treatment. We want to help their symptoms, and we want to lower their uh, what they call the AHI, to use a big word like, like Rich said, but to lower uh, the number of events, the number of times their airway closes off. We want to improve their health while we also improve their symptoms. And of course, the patients are going to want to know how much it's going to cost them. So if we have a system to look at that very quickly, uh, like this, I mean, Rich, what, how many, what's about the longest sleep test you've ever gotten in your hand? The longest sleep test. Yeah, the, the most pages. Oh, my so what's gosh. The what's the average, I've, anyway? I would say our average now is about 10, maybe 15 pages. Yeah, sometimes they're 2, 15. But, man, you're no. going to look at all that information, and what does all that mean? And where are you going to store that information? Are you going to look through all 15 pages every time you talk to this patient? Uh, you need to have a system to, to extract the key points, like your bullet points about what you need. And this is the information we recommend that you pull out of a sleep test. This is what we have designed our DS3 software to do. It pulls that information out so that you can refer to it at the consultation so we can talk to the patient about the level of apnea they have, what expected uh, result we might get. Are we going to get them to a, a more healthy level where they still may have some apnea, or do we think we're going to get them to a where they will consider non-apneic? It really depends on where they are to start with. And we're going to refer to this information down the road after we've already treated them to see how well we've improved their objective, uh, uh, their objective test with the follow-up sleep test. And you can look through the list of the everything from the date to the AHI to the diagnosis. And, and again, the point of this seminar is you need a system for doing this. A critical decision is how are we going to manage these sleep tests? How am I going to track them? How am I going to look at them? And you got to have a system. Here's a system that we recommend. It's really nicely done in DS3. Here's the information we recommend you extracting out of those tests uh, instead of looking at the 10, 12, 8 pages that they are. Yeah, and you know how long it takes me to put this into DS3 now, Guy? I learned this from you. <laughs> I go, hey, uh, hey, Pam, will you put that in there for me? So the first 10, I had to go through with Pam and I had to show her how to right. glean this information out. But now I've got it all at my fingertips. So if you're new and to this, AHI, RDI, you know, th this is a part of the language that you have to learn. But don't, we'll don't let this time. scare you away. Yeah, there's just we'll a few simple things. Time. Yeah. That's but the beauty of this is we, we've got a little tab there in sleep tests, and then I get to see in chronological order the, the baseline and the, both the treatment, uh, titration studies with their dental device or with CPAP. It's just a very neat, simple way to organize this and see it and have access to it. And if you use uh, DS3 and one of our uh, sleep testing partners, this uh, like sleeptest.com, it comes right back into, you don't even have to have someone do it. It does it automatically when you order the test through DS3. It pops up, it populates this information and gives you access to the full report if you hit the view button. So again, the system is you've got to be able to organize this. And then we got to have to organize the symptoms. Uh, this is the health record and we're, we're trying to determine how well we're going to help this patient. And Every patient I treat, we sit down and we come to an agreement on the goal of treatment. And there's two aspects of the goal of treatment. One is what symptoms are we trying to address and what we would consider successful? And 
what level of apnea are you to start with and what level of apnea or non-apnea are we going to achieve what we consider successful because sometimes we don't get rid of we don't go all the way to health we make severe apneic patients mild apneic we take people who are terribly sleepy to a whole lot less sleepy or snores to less snores and we want to come up to those agreements and we've got to have a good way to come up with a baseline and be able to refer back to that information without looking through 17 pages of notes each time. Uh, that's the system that you that you need to be in place. We're going to briefly go through our system about this, the, the, these uh, uh, these um, uh, specific items and how we do that. A critical decision is find a system to do this. Yeah, what's your chief complaint, guy? I think we learn that as dentists all the time. You know what what's what's here, and, and I like this because. I always get three from people. I say, okay, I've got my magic wand here and I can wave it and I'm gonna fix one thing. What would it be? Snoring, sleepy, tired, you know, headaches. Uh, I wake up and my heart's racing and I get them to give me one, two or three. Um, here we've got a system where they can put check marks, marks and they can mark this and then this, all of this information goes into a summary sheet you can now incorporate into letters and do all kinds of things with. So again, there's a really neat system here, but, but let's walk through these things, guy. And then subjectively, how sleepy are you? How tired are you? How much energy do you have on an average day? Uh, how bad is your snoring? How many times do you wake up at night? So this is all part of the sleep questionnaire that we're utilizing to get a baseline and we're also using this after we put them in a dental device and we titrate it to see those subjective improvements. The guy talked about that. Yeah, we also want to know what else they've tried because if someone has really severe apnea and they're wearing their CPAP every night all night long, uh, I'm not as excited to treat them. But if they have really severe apnea and they're not wearing their CPAP but they're only wearing it three hours, uh, 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 four hours a night, three nights a week, yeah, we better be treating them quickly. And we want to know why they can't wear their CPAP because this can affect insurance billing, but it can also affect most patients as to whether they're good candidates or not for a combination therapy. So we've got all this information. We actually do this through a web portal. So our, our patients answer this information on a HIPAA compliant web portal at home prior to coming into the appointment so that now when they, we sit down at the consultation, we know all this information. We know if they've tried dental devices before, if they've tried things like weight loss or had surgery. And so we know their symptoms. We know uh, what the chief complaints are. We know other treatments they've tried. We know their health history too, which I'm not gonna get into because that's pretty straightforward. So we sit down with them at the consultation and we say, oh, we see you're, you're wanting to quit snoring and you wanna, you realize that you had just had a heart attack and you wanna put yourself at less risk. And we come to an agreement as to whether, what we think a dental device can do for them. And the patient says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. This, this is what I want. And well, we've, you know, we wanna make sure that uh, you're a good candidate for this. And we, sometimes if you hold that back a little bit, they're more inclined to, to want it more, you know, well, well, hopefully you will be a good candidate. And they'll ask, hey, am I a candidate, am I a candidate? And if they, when they say that, and if they are a good candidate, they're gonna wanna know how much uh, it costs oftentimes. And we do this through medical billing, and you've gotta have a way of answering that question. Uh, the critical decision there, we're gonna talk about medical billing in a moment, but how are you gonna know prior to the patient coming in uh, what the answer to the question is, how much it's gonna cost? In our system, we have an instant eligibility check where, where we have a con direct connection with 4,500 billers that uh, at a quick click of a button, we can find out what their coverages are and how much of their deductibles have been met and what percentages they pay. And so we're going to be able to answer uh, that question at the consultation. So therefore, Rich, don't, uh, what percentage of the patients that you see for consultations when you have all those uh, items ready and you have a meaningful con consultation that your team does most of, uh, do you get the majority of them to, to move forward with treatment as long as they're good candidates? Uh, we do. And most dentists would not believe when I tell you, Guy, that we're uh, hitting about 850 right now. So we, we get 850 out of 1,000 patients to say yes to treatment. Right. But that's because I'm doing everything that Guy said. I'm, I'm crossing all my T's. I'm dotting all my I's. I'm doing everything I can to decrease the patients out of pocket. Uh, if, if we're at a network, then we try to get gap exceptions. I'm actually in network with some medical companies. So we could talk about insurance billing and, and the in and out of, and all that. We can talk about that for three hours and maybe we'll do that maybe after the home sleep test one next time. But, but because 
we get all of those things ready and we have answers to the questions that the patient has, we are much more successful at that. Yeah, so the three check boxes are the, the symptoms, the questionnaire, in other words, the sleep test, and the eligibility check. And we have all those things in order. The patient's gonna say yes to treatment. And now we need a system for doing an exam. And a, a decision is, is, is how are we gonna do this? You can do this in a big long soap note. You can do it through DS3. You can make your own template somehow, but this exam is not the type of exam that you've been taught to do uh, in, uh, in operative dentistry 101 in dental school. Uh, it, it is, it is uh, we're looking at the airway. We're looking at the teeth in a different way to try to determine which device to do, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So we've got a chart whether the tongue's scalloped or uh, is it enlarged, is it obstructing the airway? We need these, this documentation to, to uh, submit our claims to medical insurance, but we also need it uh, to, um, to um, help decide which device we're gonna do, as well as document their susceptibility to to apnea as, as well. So we're gonna look at these things and we develop a system where we can just make these chat boxes so that it can uh, go much quicker as you look like the uvula and enlarged tonsils. I mean, I'll back it up to the uvula again for a second. I mean, you can describe that. We can describe the tonsils or we can just make chat boxes uh, that we can, where we can go in and, and check, you know, the what the tonsils look like and the <coughs> tonsil yeah, grading. It, it sure makes uh, doing this uh, exam very quickly guy having DS3 because I'm in an operatory we have this up on a big huge TV on the on the thing and the patient sitting there and the assistant is walking through this and I'm telling her which boxes to check so we go through a couple of pages of these types of things like guy is doing and probably what do you think guy about five or six Six minutes now. You a yeah, I mean, including the bite. I do the bite at the end, yeah. uh, which we're not. We don't even have that as a critical decision. I mean, there's really uh, most people do the bite similarly, uh, the same way. The point is, you've got to have a system if you want to do this effectively. A critical decision is having a system to document all this information we're putting on the screen right now, quickly and efficiently, uh, and repeatedly, so that you can come back and refer to it. So you're doing it the same way each time, and you get in. Uh, you get all the information that's necessary because this information is important, like I said, for multiple reasons. I mean, we have the nasal passages on here. Uh, you know, I think you told me about that years ago, how important it was. And it took me quite some time before I actually uh, had to probably learn it the hard way myself that learning what's going on with the nose is critically important to dental sleep medicine success. Or at the least, when I define success, at least letting the patient's expectations be aligned with what likely may happen. So uh, having a system where we can where we can look at that information and document it and refer back to it is, is absolutely uh, critical. Uh, as well as the, the TMJ, uh, are you excited uh, about the new TMJ module we have coming out, Rich? Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, you and I both guys spent 100 hours putting that stuff together and doing all this kind of stuff. And, you know, the TMJ is another uh, hour long, if not a full day long uh, <laughs> topic. But, uh, you know, you get 10 TMJ experts um, together in a room and what do you have you have ultimate fighting championship three, <laughs> you know because <laughs> none of them agree on anything and yeah. uh, you, you know so like you say guy document 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 uh, the bottom line is that putting somebody in a mandibular repositioning device makes TM dysfunction and myofascial pain better the bottom line is most of the time it does so if an insurance company says well does the patient have tmj of course they have a tmj they actually have two they have one on the right and they have one on the left that's my typical answer um, if you want my clinical notes about where they are and how i think a mandibular repositioning device will affect their tmj in a positive way i'm happy to include those uh, for you but document and, and don't let it scare you away, okay? Be, be careful but, but, and do your homework. But again, this is why you, you, you team up with DS3 because you got a thousand questions and we help you answer those. Yeah, at the very least, we need a document, clicking, popping, uh, range yes. of motion. And I think what, something I like what you said, Rich, is uh, you know, don't be afraid of this with your TMD patients. Most of the time it makes them better. And if you, know, if you document it properly, and that's what you have to have a, 
a, a system for a decision you have to make is how am I going to document this? Because that way, if the insurance company says, oh, I'm worried about this, uh, you can show them why they shouldn't be. Also, uh, you know, that we want to document it with the patient so that we know that uh, prior to treatment, the way things were. So, yes, there is a little bit of a, of a, of a covering ourselves uh, part of it, too. And we've made it very simple. Uh, by, by, you know, we have an advanced uh, uh, module coming out where there's a lot more information in here. But really, we try to keep it simple. And this is the information from range of motion, how wide you can open, lateral movements. We have a really precise system to do this. And again, I see a lot of questions coming in. We'll, we'll, we're going to be close to being finished right on time at 9. We'll stay on to answer those afterwards. And if uh, we'll put those courses up again. I saw that was one of the questions. Just type in course if, you're, if you want to get that discount. And uh, put it. let us know if you uh uh, we want someone to talk to you. I think we mentioned that earlier. You can just type in consult and we can talk to you about your sleep practice and your challenges and uh, in your system. So uh, now we're, we're down to dental devices. Uh, Rich, well, that's, uh, can you see how most of this is uh, prior? I mean, it's the, you know, it's uh, taking the impressions and giving someone a dental device is almost an afterthought. All the work comes ahead of time in dental sleep. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I, I think it's front end loaded, Guy. Yeah. I, I, do, I do believe that. You know, we put a lot of effort and work into uh, not only screening patients, but we help facilitate that sleep test. We write letters to their physicians. Sometimes I do peer to peers with physicians about this. And, and a lot of times we're, we verify benefits and we want to know, you know, we might get an author, help a patient get an authorization. We haven't even taken an impression yet. So yeah, you're abs absolutely right. So as a dentist, when dentists say, well, I don't know which device to make. Well, pick one, you know. Right. Um, you, I, I teach that you cannot make a, a wrong device, but you can make a better device. And Guy teases me about this all the time. He says, this is how I taught him how to do it. Just put <laughs> three or four up on the wall and spin him around twice and throw a dart. You know, so you're going to make a good device. And, and we'll do a webinar uh, another time about which device you use, but but guy, you are the brains behind this. You know, putting your computer brain and algorithms together. Tell us about this. Well, I think one of the reasons Rich and I uh, have become such good friends and partners is we don't always think alike, uh, but we we think differently enough to come up with really great solutions. And you know, I'd asked Rich early on because Rich was doing this, uh, you know, more of it when I first met him than I was, and uh, I was like, Rich, how do you know which device to do well I just kind of do my exam and I I you know I look if they're grinding their teeth and how big their tongue is and they're to do their teeth they have molars back there of course you can't use an EMA if they got molars you know you dummy and you look at their nose and all the stuff lifted listed down the left side Rich was like this is what I look at but he'd been doing it so long after thousands of devices it was intuitive to Rich uh, and you know you know it's not intuitive to the rest of us so what we teach you is, is you go through these things down the left and you analyze the bruxes and the tongue size and so forth. And there's a rhyme and a reason why we do that. I finally extracted out of Rich's brain and, 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 and it, it really does affect the devices. The devices, like Rich said, they will probably all work, but one of them might be better suited for someone if they can't breathe through their nose or if they're a grinder. So with DS3, you can take that information and you can slide these little cursors back and forth and you can even put extra emphasis and hit the sort and it'll sort the devices in some in order based on those answers and you know what we say is do some up near the top uh, and not, not even down way at the bottom for that particular patient and, and it'll keep you really out of trouble when it comes right down to it though um, I, I would say this is 98 percent of the of the devices that I do uh, are, are one of these four and we don't have time to, to go into extreme detail on it, but Rich, do, are these still the four that you do primarily? Yeah, yeah, I add a few in there. Uh, but again, we're looking at all of those things Guy said. And, and Guy, uh, thank you. I think there was a compliment in there when you were talking about how I did that. It was but, his, uh, but it was one, yes. I hit it quite nicely. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's what we're doing. We're looking at that. And then, and then Guy, Guy kind of put that and he made it a little more usable in here so that we now do that. But, but don't let this scare you off. If you picked one of those four devices right there and you made it on your first 10 patients, at the end of that, you would go, hey, you know what? An EMA wasn't really a good choice for this particular patient for this reason. Maybe I should have done the dorsal. OK, uh, and again, that's what we help you with. But but get started, you know, get doing this. Don't let this part scare you away. Yeah. And, you know, you gave me that advice early on, because, again, 
Uh, I was dabbling. You were doing a lot of it. Uh, and you just said, just start making them. That's what I did. Just started making 10 of one, 10 of another. And, you know, some of it does come down to personal preference, too. Some people like gold crown still. Some like CAD cam. You know, some like SUVs and some like sports cars, you know, so it does come down. So just doing it. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, most of the time, the devices will work and we will definitely do another one uh, on the devices. We just did one not too long ago. So uh, you can actually go to our YouTube channel and, and review that one at some point if you want more information uh, uh, on uh, uh, on the dental devices. So now but here comes. Go ahead. We're not done, guy. We don't oh. just give them a device and go, good luck, you know? We, we've got to manage this now, you know? We, we give them the device, and, and I always tell people, guy, people, I get the question asked sometimes, and go, well, Dr. Drake, that's a lot of money, you know, do you guarantee this? Yeah, I guarantee I'll do the, this is what you taught me, by the way, I'll guarantee I'll do the very best I can to make this device uh, uh, succeed at all the, the goals that we talked about. If you'll guarantee me that you'll, be patient and wear this thing. Is that pretty much what you taught me? And show up for your appointments and show. pay me. Okay. Yeah, and the pay me may be important too. <laughs> That's why I'm broke. I said, no. <laughs> I forgot that part. No. Uh, you know, so okay. absolutely. You got to have a system uh, after you <laughs> deliver the devices and uh, that, that, that what are we going to do now? And that's where, uh, you know, a lot of times we, we you know, we kind of got lost before. And I think if you keep in mind, I already went over the two goals, but there's really three goals or three steps. And we talked to the patient, first of all, just wear this thing. Just yeah. get used to it. I don't, you know, if you feel better, worse, indifferent, wear it for about three weeks, we typically tell our patients. I know a lot of people do it quicker than that, but I believe three weeks is about right. We get you back. We're going to look at your symptoms. And then we're going to look at how well this works for the follow-up sleep test. And you know what? This is exact opposite, Rich, it occurred to me the other day than CPAP. CPAP, they dial up the CPAP to your airways open. They say, we hope you feel better and we hope you wear it. We go the <laughs> opposite way. You're going to wear the thing because it's useless if you don't wear it. And then we're going to address your symptoms. And uh, to keep us on track here, you know, it's pretty simple. Are you wearing it? Yes. If they're not wearing it, find out why and, and, and address that. Uh, most of you dentists can figure that out from, you know, pushing on teeth and so forth. And then is it working? And if it's not working to the extent that we want it to, then we're going to adjust it more. And then we're going to ask them again, is it working? And eventually, once we uh, reach the subjective goals, we're going to follow up with some form of test to see where we are with that. And this is where the beauty of DS3 comes in, isn't it, Rich? Yeah, we get to keep track of all this stuff. You know, we track every time they could do a follow-up. Here's our baseline subjective test. And then they're going to come in for follow-up. And we say, how many nights a week are you wearing it? Are you less sleepy? Is your snoring better? Is your energy level better? I mean, I have it right here at my fingertips, and it's it's beautiful, guy. It's a thing of beauty. It really is. And they may come in for three or four appointments to track the subjective symptoms until we reach a point where they're happy. And most of the time, we reach a point where we're content with the symptoms, the vast majority of the time. I mean, we, we really do. So sometimes they may have three or four columns here. So you've got to have a system to track that. If you just have them come in and say how you feel, uh, it, you're going to get anywhere from fine to hearing everything about the patient's life that you didn't want to know. So uh, you, you've got to have a system to track this, and you've got to have a system to take this information and ultimately relay it to the uh, primary care and other medical professionals. And again, DS3 uh, will be happy if a consult to show you how easily that's done. Now the patient's symptoms are better. We need to validate that just because you feel better doesn't mean you're at the, the best we can do as far as your health. And that's with the follow-up sleep test. And, you know, uh, you know what I tell people, Guy? What's that? I tell them that the follow-up sleep test is what helps me sleep better. <laughs> I like that. That's true. Because they can, I, they can yeah. feel, they can, their apnea can be so bad that they feel so much better. They're convinced they're healthy and they can still have severe apnea. Because yes. they went from really severe to severe. And we want to get them down to mild, moderate, or none. Right. So this follow-up test is extremely important. You can do it in the sleep lab. But the way we do it through DS3, and you've got to have a system. It's a critical decision. How am I going to follow up? How am I going to track this? How am I going to relay this information to the, to the healthcare providers? And as we put that information, as we showed you on the original slides, and your team took the time to extract that information and put it like Rich talked about, or if you use one of our sleep testing partners and it just magically appears this way, then we do a follow-up test either one, two, or three nights. And ideally, most of the home sleep testing companies do two. Uh, I'm showing you three here, but can you look at the glance at this 
real quickly, that data is put in, in some sort of system, in this case, DS3, and we can look at the, if you don't even know what HI is, it's the number of times they, 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 they have an airway obstructed. They went from almost 30 down to six. And we can look at this information, and in about one minute or less, I can analyze this data, pick the best treatment position, uh, put a task in the management system to my, task, my, my team to contact the patient and let them know where to progress with the dental device and to send the letters to, the, to the, uh, uh, all the care, healthcare providers. Uh, it takes me about one minute to, to, to analyze that and to make that task for my, t my t team to do. It only takes them a couple of minutes to do those letters and however long the phone call takes because we have made a decision to, um, on a system for making this work well. Yeah, so we're walking this patient right through, aren't we, Guy? We found a patient, we've identified them, you know, through our screening. We helped facilitate the sleep test. We, we put the right device in place. And, uh, you know, now we, we come to, you know, oh, my gosh, you know, are we going to, how do we bill for this and how do we do it? Again, Guy, you're always preaching systems, 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 you know. And I love your th your thing here. You know, you've been trained to do a root canal. What do you, what do you say here, guy? You're you're good at this. Yeah, I mean, nothing on here should make you uncomfortable, except for the fact that maybe we don't have a gut we don't have a rubber dam on the endo on the bottom left. But uh, other than that, you, we've got files in people's teeth, and this doesn't make people nervous. I show this slide in our courses. Does it make you nervous here? No, no, that's everyday stuff. I'm used to it. I know how to do that. Well, how about if you're going to get sued? Are you going to be your own attorney or build your own house or or be your own, did you do your own taxes recently? I mean, would that make you nervous or fly the plane if the pilot has a heart attack, you know? Uh, you, you, yeah, the, some of the stuff you might do, but most of it you don't because you've not been trained to do it. You don't do it on a daily basis. You're not gonna do as well as the medical professionals. And the bottom line is a system for this is real simple. Get a medical co billing company to help you because that's all they do. And dental billing is just as different as doing your taxes is uh, from medical billing. Is something you don't know anything about just because you're a dental billing. If you've not done medical billing, don't think you know anything about it. So get a third party biller. We at DS3 uh, have our own billing arm uh, that, that, that helps. That's all they do all day long. Rooms full of people. We have other billing companies we work with, and that's all they do is help dentists bill uh, for medical procedures. So use the third party biller. That's the easiest one. That's the easiest decision. That's a matter of uh, picking up the phone, sending an email and uh, signing up with a third party builder. Because understand the moment you do a dental procedure, I'm sorry, a, a, a dental device on, on an apneic patient, you are now practicing medicine. It's a medical procedure. It's a life and death procedure in many cases, and it is billed under medicine. So it's not dental. You have to make some decisions. And I'm talking kind of fast because I can talk quick when I need to to be done on time. That uh, <laughs> uh, Medicare, are you going to be in and out of network? What billing systems and who are you going to do it through? Are you going to do it your own self or are you going to do it through one of our affiliates or, or another billing company? Once you make that bottom decision, they will help you with those other decisions. They'll even do a lot of that work for you. So really the only critical decision you need to make for billing is are you going to try to do this yourself? And so you better attend a lot of courses and uh, listen to our upcoming webinars that we'll certainly have on billing. But even then, it's a, it's a lot to chew. Well, I, I can tell you, Guy, that most people, uh, even when they know better, they don't do it themselves. Right. They just go, oh, yeah. you know, for the 8, 7, 8, 9, 10%, whatever it is, I have to pay the billing company of the insurance check amount. It's just right. not worth the hassle, and we do that. So. Yeah. Yep. I mean, one of our clients this month, Rich, to build over six figures in one month and it'll sleep. And he's happy to pay us to do it because, uh, because it, it, he knows the resources it would take. Uh, and the reason he's got that kind of money uh, was because he had uh, help. Uh, and last thing that you're going to need here is it, you need to have a defined goals. I mean, I think in life I have my goals for 2017 sitting on my desk. I look at them every day. And you need to have a checklist. And we can help you with this. But what needs to be done? You know, we gave you the real critical points. And certainly those are the big bullet points of these critical decisions that we have. And the last one being you need to have a checklist. But there's our lots of little sub checklists and decisions that you have to make within each of those critical decisions. And you need to have a checklist and a timeline. Say, I'm going to get this done in this length of time. And, uh, and we see our practices to accomplish that when they, when they have a vision and a goal and a, a desire to get it accomplished in a certain amount of time, uh, the sky is the limit. So it's, uh, 
a lot of fun, isn't it, Rich? Dental sleep. I mean, can you imagine going back to dentistry these days? Mm, I, I'm I'm no good at giving shots, guy. Like you said. <laughs> Well, you, you don't have to do this like Rich and I. I mean, we're not promoting everybody to sell their dental practice. Uh, we hope you don't, but we need good dentists out there. Just got, we just got so busy we had to make our own decisions. But even if you just add this to your practice and you do a device every other month and you pay for our services and you pay for a third-party biller, uh, you're still going to add $78,000, almost $8,000 just very conservatively to your practice. You do one a month and you're adding $19,000. Here in Florida, you can take your kids to Disney for two or three days for that, I always say, for that nineteen grand. we are getting ready to go over there. It's expensive in case you haven't been lately, Rich. But uh, <laughs> if you do one a week and take four weeks off, you're pushing six figures of new income to your practice. And you can do this in eastern Kentucky where I grew up, or you can do it in uh, New York City. I mean, it's medical insurance. It's not the same as dental. Uh, the patients are everywhere. Uh, it, it's not geographically binding or, or needed. Everywhere throughout the country, this is this is needed. So there is no, absolutely nothing you can do to add this service, uh, a service to your practice that has a financial um, potential as dental sleep. You have to have a plan. We went over the critical decisions today uh, that you need to make to start formulating that plan. We at Dental Sleep Solutions help with this plan through the four pillars, all the steps that we've gone over with you, and we help you get on the right road. This train track I like using, because when Rich and I started doing this, you couldn't sleep test anywhere but the lab. You couldn't get anybody to pay medical billing. Insurances didn't cover it, physicians didn't recommend it, it wasn't even the standard of care. We didn't know which devices to use, there were no systems out there. It was just forests, trees, mountains, and now the dental sleep path has been laid down. There's systems, it's far easier. You don't have to recreate the wheel or recreate the railroad. You can just jump on and, and we hope that we can help you with doing that to where you know you can be, oh, went too fast. You can be uh, like Rich. I got This is Rich's picture here you know, at his <laughs> office. He's just sitting around all his team. You can tell that's my head, guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah so it could be me too uh you know i'm getting close myself but you know it can be you that is all we do here we help dentists succeed in dental sleep by helping provide the education coaching software and support for the four pillars of dental sleep which are screening testing treating and billing that's our commitment to you if you want a, a free demo uh, a free uh, consultation uh, just type in consultation into your uh, uh, in there and we will uh, one of our trainers who have years of dental sleep experience will meet with you hear about your challenges talk to you about uh, the the various uh, ways we can help that and even give you a, a ton of great advice so if you just type in demo uh, uh, Jody or Brandy or uh, uh, one of our other one of the trainers will get a hold of you and, and do uh, set that up uh, I think you'll get a lot of value of it. I think they're even going to give you a free marketing kit to help put up in your waiting rooms and so forth we'll to help generate some patients uh, and if you want to come to one of our courses if you type in course uh, they'll also give you a discount there's the dates uh, uh, on there so uh, again enter in consult as I saw come through here if you want to know about uh, dental sleep you can also I'm gonna come back to that slide I just put up in a moment our dental sleep medicine insider there's where you can sign up every other month we have free articles so a lot of good information on that so just go to dental sleep insider it takes about 30 seconds to sign up and no uh just comes right to your inbox and uh, great information there again man, this that, is that, that, that's great guy but man you we, we have videos in there and we've got yes, all we kinds can. of other people i mean it's it is just the future man of it of, is awesome of, I it learned is, it, uh, James and Spencer's article last month. I, I've been telling everybody about how wonderful it was. It's uh, got a nice video and text in it. I mean, some of the country's leaders, you can see them here on the on just a few of the, the covers here. So you're, you're absolutely right. I guess I'm just trying to be mindful of the time because it's 9.03, and we're going to stay on to answer all these questions again for you. And again, uh, go ahead and put this down. Uh, uh, May 30th, we're going to be talking about the testing. Uh, again, uh, sign up we're for gonna that. Have, yeah, we're going to have Ryan Javenbach with us, and he's yeah. a wealth of knowledge about he this. Really so, you know, as a homework guy, maybe we can give some of the people here who want to be on next time. They could, they can even call their own state dental board. You know, it just takes. Uh -huh. You can have your your office manager do that and say, hey, what's what's the position on uh, home sleep testing? Just just as a you know to kind of kind of get you interested in this and and doing yeah. that. 
Yeah. And, and then we'll, we're going to touch base on a lot of that kind of stuff. You know, Guy, I've been looking through the questions here at some other things. So uh, I know we got our last slide up on there on the DS3 experience. I'll, I'll so, go back to the courses for a second. I think someone put that in. Okay, go yeah, ahead. But we, you know, we want to help you do this. Uh, we are the most affordable people out there, and, and we were also the best at, at really helping dentists do this. I mean, just look at all these questions here, Guy, tonight. People have questions, you know, how do we do this, you know? Uh, one of them uh, we can get on, I think, Guy, is about uh, the George Gage and, you know, taking a bite. So uh, I've taken maybe 7,000, 8,000 bites now, uh, and and you know, the best study that you can look at for uh, where we actually treat somebody in a protrusive position is is the study that uh, they did on the matrix, the matrix system. Yeah, I like that study a lot. They, they, they took 60 patients and it's a remote control mandibular protruder. And what they did was a dentist made the trace and then they put this thing in and then uh, in in a sleep lab, they actually move their jaw forward and they document how far they have to move it forward to treat their apnea, to reduce it by half and get it below 10. So we have that number, that AHI, apnea hypopnea index, we have to do that. And about half the, you, you know, if you look at it, it was anywhere from one millimeter to maximum protrusion, which was for most people is about 10. So I have always taught after doing this thousands of times that we started a forward but very comfortable position because the number one goal of treatment that Guy Yatros put up there, Guy, was you have to wear the device. Right. And if we start them at 60% or 70%, sometimes they don't get through the first week. You know, we could say, ah, you big wimp, you know, you'll get used to it, you'll be fine. Uh, so I start them in a very comfortable and forward, which for us is about 30%. Sometimes we do 40, sometimes we do a 50, sometimes we do a little less. And if the, the more severe the patient is, the more aggressively we, we titrate it. I always break things up into thirds. I can titrate the first third very quickly, the second third a little more slowly, and the last third even more slowly. But, but we don't know what that position is gonna be. So bite is forward and comfortable. You can do that with the George gauge, you can do it with the Pro gauge, you can do it with the Andrew gauge, you can do it with the airway metric system. There is a number of ways to do that, and, and they all work. Yeah, one thing I want to mention too, uh, I see quite a few people put in consult of, uh, you know, we will contact you, answer a lot of these questions that we hopefully are getting to tonight. Our team can answer those as well for you. That's what they do. Their whole jobs, they get up every day is just to, to answer these questions. So they'll get to that as well as, uh, you know, we had uh, several hundred people sign up for this tonight. Um, we do every other Wednesday, uh, tomorrow night you're doing it, right, Rich? Our, we do our online study club for our members only. And if you decide to, to join up with DS3, our very reasonable membership allows you unlimited access to that. And we actually unmute the, the attendees because we don't have several hundred on here. We have a manageable amount and we can actually have conversations. It's, it's myself or Rich and we're bringing in guests for those now too as well. And that's part of the value we have. Someone said they can't read the courses there. Uh, and we're adding more and more. I would just suggest that you type in course. Someone will contact you. You'll lock in a, in the in the discount. But there are Grand Rapids. We just had uh, Grand Rapids, Detroit, Roseville, California, Nashville, Meckensburg, PA, Louisville, Elgin, Dallas, Tampa. It's coming up here in 512, I know. Canton, Ohio, Las Vegas, and San Antonio is where the, the major courses in our member meetings in the fall uh, on October, uh, in, in October. So uh, if you can't read those dates, just type in course and, uh, and we'll we'll email you and or get in touch with you. And if one fits in your schedule, you have at least a lot in that, that discount. So um, what other questions are on there? I know Rich, you and part of the team has been answering some of these questions along the way. Or is there any that we're not, not getting to here? Uh, you know, one I think guy was, uh, do, do they, do the insurance payers pay for a follow-up home sleep test with a dental device? And the answer to that is uh, nine out of 10 times. Yes. Very seldom have we, uh, not had a payer pay for a follow-up sleep test right. with a dental device. 
Yeah, that and and one of the questions, how often they'll do it. You know, one thing I, I have to say, medical insurance comes down to proper documentation and and I and proper and showing that there was a need for it. I mean, they you know it's a little different. show there's a reason and proper documentation they usually you know they, they usually will cover it as long as it's a covered expense the challenge we ran into years ago was they just didn't approve dental devices so they didn't cover it and now now it is so yes they they, they cover it the vast majority of the time the one uh, point we'll, we'll get into next time is it's important to talk to your patients at the consultation that they can expect to have a follow-up test and if there's a fee associated with that whether it's from the sleep testing company or uh, from your office or, or somewhere, or the physician, then they need to expect to, uh, 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 to, to that fee to be coming their way and that, that procedure to be coming their way. Very good, Guy. Well, thank you so much for putting that uh, PowerPoint together, and uh, you did a great job with that, as always. And thank everybody uh, for being on tonight. That was an unbelievable amount of questions. Uh, Thanks to Jason, who's been answering most of them. And uh, I think we hit on on all of them. Guy, do you see anything I'm else? I'm looking them here. And again, you know, one thing, we, how we've been able to scale what we do is that uh, we have a whole team of people who could answer the vast majority of these questions that you all, uh, that you all put in here. That's what we do five days a week. Uh, we're here to answer them. It looks like most of them got answers. You will get CE credit emailed to you tomorrow. Uh, and uh, don't forget about the other course coming up. And again, if anybody, the last call here, if you want a discount on the course, type in course, or if you want someone uh, to just talk to you about your practice, answer any questions we didn't have time to get to tonight, uh, talk to you about your challenges, and certainly we can show you how we can help, but uh, we're very uh, low key. Uh, we, we enjoy helping dentists, and uh, I think that you'll get a lot out of it in addition to the marketing kit. So I don't see any other ones. Uh, uh, they're on there. Thank you all for all the thank yous I see on there. It makes uh, 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 makes me feel like uh, doing this again in the future, and we'll uh, we'll we'll get to all the the questions you have by getting deeper into these critical decisions uh, in, in the future. Yes, we will be at the AADSM in June, and uh, I saw that's the last one I see on there. Rich. Yeah, please 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 stop by and see us, and uh, we we'd love to talk to you and meet you in person. We, we have so many members now that Guy don't, and I don't always get to meet all of them, but we want to meet you. So yes. uh, when you come by the booth, we give you a little DS3 uh, uh, thing that we'd certainly like you to wear and, and spread the news. So um, thank you guys. It's been, yeah. been wonderful. Yeah, hope to see you at the ADSM or a meeting in the future. Uh, say hi if you see us. Uh, it's a great opportunity to to meet other DS3 members, uh, uh, you, you can uh, talk to anybody who's, who's, who, who uh, utilizes our services. And um, one thing that makes me feel good every morning is I know that um, uh, the very vast majority, if not 100% of them, I mean, people really appreciate what we do. And that, that AADSM meeting, Rich, has become to me um, kind of the payoff for all of our hard work. Because <laughs> all these people come by telling us, telling us their success stories. And I, I really, uh, it makes uh, all of our hard work through the year uh, uh, pay off and we can, we can realize that, you know. Very good. You're a very well-adjusted young man for having two psychologist parents, Guy. So uh, you turned out pretty it. good. <laughs> so did you. And uh, thank goodness that lucky day I met you so many years ago. Uh, I can't imagine where our lives would be uh, with uh, – I, I'm pretty sure I'd be fishing somewhere if I hadn't been met you instead of working yeah. right now. But, but we are enjoying this. Developed and proved and all, what what good we've done, and you know, and and the fish we saved. That's right. <laughs> all right. Uh, good night, everybody. Thanks Thank for joining us. Hear you on uh, the next webinar. And all those people who typed in consult and uh, and course, so uh, our team will be getting right back with you, and we look forward to seeing you uh, on the the next ones coming up. Have a have a good night.